Well, I've got hold of one eventually. This is the BSA R10. Uh, many variants out there. As you know, I will tell you exactly what I think about this. This is a subscriber rifle, so keep watching and I'll tell you what I think. Don't forget to check out our new website, ergonology.com. There you'll find all of our latest videos, social media links, along with many 3D printed parts, especially designed for the air rifle community. We also have an independent forum where you can trade your equipment. All of the links are on www.ergonology.com and the link can be found in the YouTube video description below. All right there guys, it's uh, Catanonia here, Steve from Ergonology and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we do a whole load of video reviews on air rifles, air pistols, as well as technology. And the whole point of this channel is, is that I borrow the rifles off my subscribers. Therefore, I can tell you exactly what I think of them. So if you're new here, like I said, hit that subscribe button, check the comments down below. We've got our Facebook group, we've got our forum where you can sell rifles on as well. And of course, we've got the YouTube channel. I'll check it all out down below but anyway today we have got the BSA R10 now there's many many variants of the R10 um, and this one I happen to have is the Mark II now obviously there's the Mark I there's the Mark II there's the SE there's the carbine versions uh, there's loads of different stocks for them all and recently um, at uh, the 2019 British Shooting Show uh, BSA brought out the R10 T, uh, T, uh, 10 with a TH on it. Uh, basically, that's their anniversary model of the R10. So this rifle has been around for a long, long time. And you'll find plenty of them on the second-hand market. So as usual, sort of buyer beware and that lot, but you're gonna be spoilt for choice. There's loads of them. And many of them will have been modified as well. So like I said, I've got the uh, Mark II. So first off, a massive thank you to Jeff Duggan, who is uh, uh, one of my long-term subscribers. He has a channel as well. I'll leave that down in the link below where he does a lot of pellet testing um, up at Atherton Range. So um, thank you, Jeff, for that. I think he's got my Compato at the moment to have a play with that. But anyway, you can get these in many, many different variants, like I said. Um, prices from new, depending on which one you get. But basically, the SE is the one that you're going to see a lot of. Uh, they are ranging anywhere from, I've seen them as cheap as 750 quid, all the way up to about £900. Um, if you want the 10th edition one, um, you're looking at around about £1,000. So this is like what I'd say is middle to top range sort of pricing that you'll pay for an air rifle. We're not down in the bottom layer here, and um, we're certainly not in the FX or the day state, but we're sort of in the middle there, a yeah, very competitive market. Um, obviously competing with the likes of air arms as well in that in that bracket, as well as some of the other manufacturers in there. But um, yeah, this is the, the R10, and this one is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, it's a Mark II, and it is in a beautiful, beautiful walnut stock. I actually really do like this. Now, I'll just give you the information on the Mark II. Um, a lot of uh, the other ones are going to be very similar. Shot counts will change, weights and lengths and stuff will change. But basically, this one is a 97 um, centimetre in total length, obviously without the, the aftermarket silencer that's on here. The barrel on it um, is, a, is a cold forged um, hammer barrel. So that's been made, um, I, I think BSA make their own barrels on there, but don't quote me on that one. Um, but yeah, the barrel itself is uh, just a shade under 40 uh, centimeters and the weight unscoped is around about the 3.1 kilograms. It will vary depending on the stock and what additions you've had put on it. Um, it is obviously a PCP rifle, so we have the air cylinder at the bottom here. So this is using the, the standard um, cylinder, steel cylinder air bottle. You may like that, you may not, uh, but that's the feature of all of these rifles, and they all are pretty much the same like that. Um, PCP, it's regulated as well, but the Mark 1s did have um, some regulator issues. Uh, they certainly improved them with the Mark 2, and this one's actually had an aftermarket humor regulator fitted to it. Um, you'll find a lot of people will do that, so when you're buying second hand, just double check what uh, has been done to it. Um, the magazine system is 
size, the typical BSA uh, plastic magazine. Um, I'm not a great fan of these. Um, they have had problems in the past and I've had problems with these. Very pellet fussy I found with these magazines. But the magazine is a, uh, in a 177 is a 10 shot and this rifle is a 177. And in two, uh, so it's 10 shot, 177 two, and 22. And then it goes down to eight shots in 25. But it's a spring fed magazine system that you just put your pellets in um, and away you go with that. What else have we got? So yeah, it's a two-stage match trigger on here. So um, most of the BSA rifles have the same type of trigger. Very, very nice triggers. I, I, do, I do like them. Um, and then you come on to things like shot count. Now, this is a 232 bar fill, but you'll find not many people will actually fill it all up to 232 because most people have only got a 300 bar tank. So, your yeah, shot count will vary, but look, I'll give you the quoted figures on the Mark II. 177 is 165, 22 is 225, and then your 25 is 225 as well. In reality in practice the shot count on this particular rifle is not particularly great uh, realistically you're probably looking at about a maximum of a of about 90 to 100 now um, Jeff who uses this rifle regularly he, he reckons he's getting about 80 even with the humor regulator in there but then he's only filling up to just over 200 bar so shot count you will, will realistically you're looking in the one 100s or so, round about the 100s. So not a massive shot count when you compare it to the likes of the FX up there or the Red Wolf up there that have got these big carbon bottles giving you three, 400 shot on there. But it's plenty to go out um, into the field with or you're, you're plinking with on that. So um, what else have we got? Let's do our walk around. That's probably the best way of doing it. So at the back, we have a standard butt plate here. Now, I think this butt plate can be adjusted a little bit, uh, but it's basically just a standard butt plate on here. Again, in the aftermarkets, you'll get loads of different variants with these as well. Some may come with um, swivel mounts on, some may not. But basically what we've got then is a, this one's a right hand, because you can see the comb up here, but you can get them in left and right handed. Um, but you then get your stock. Now this one is in a beautiful walnut stock absolutely gorgeous that's the one thing i do love about bsa they make some fantastic stocks um so beautiful stock on here we have the bsa logo at the bottom um stippling all in the right places so yeah, a lot of rifles have put the stippling in weird places but this stippling is actually in the right place where you would actually put your hand the stippling is there nicely around the pistol grip area we have a beautiful cutout here for a thumbs up um, you can sort of go a thumb around or a thumb up it's really designed for thumb up on here so a really really nice piece of woodwork going on there um, it's a bolt action and it's quite a short throw bolt, bolt action so it's doesn't really come back now obviously this rifle is totally unloaded but it's a very very short bolt action on that as you can see um, some people like that a lot of people are used now to the lever systems I certainly am and it does take a bit of getting used to the bolt but it's a classic rifle at the end of the day it's designed to be like this up the top you have the BSI mounts on here so these are not your standard 11 mils I think these are 13 mil mounts up here so you do have to be careful what you put on I will measure up and I'll leave a little comment comment down below because I haven't measured them yet just to double check for you on there but basically you've got the mount system up the top and it's a dovetail mount on here um, so you if you do want to go out and do Picatinny then obviously you're gonna have to get some different attachments to do that um, there's not a lot else down this side of the rifle itself uh, the barrel itself as we said you can get it in 17722 and 25 uh, it's a completely free floating hammer forged barrel um, and on the end um, you can get these rifles in carbines um, some of them um, they all come with uh, silencers or moderators already attached you can you can get those different different things on there but basically just double check for you but you get um, your standard half UNF on the end uh, there will be a blanking plate on there if you just get it as standard uh, this is just a generic uh, silencer on there but um, you can put anything on there that you wanted the Virax uh, the BSA own ones you could put uh, Huggets on there anything you really want on there um, it does make quite a bark in fact let's, let's just fire this off without the silencer on it um, just so you can hear what it's like. 
Um, obviously, it's not going to work so great with the microphones that we have here, but that is very loud. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just pop the silencer back on again and we'll, we'll check to see how it goes but um, it's nice to see that you've got the standard UNF up there so you can put anything on obviously adding a silencer on the bigger the silencer the, uh, generally the quieter is but the longer your rifle is so let's try that again obviously totally safe much quieter so you are going to need one it does bark a bit um, so we've got the beautiful woodwork down here and then we've got the bottle at the back at the bottom here um, now in the in the mark ones and the mark twos the bottle is roughly the same size but you'll find that as the r10s in, uh, get newer and newer the bottle size gets bigger and bigger so you'll find that for example on the r10 the 10th anniversary one uh, they've increased the shot count and to do that they've obviously increased the size of the bottle on there but it's your standard flat type um, steel bottle um, some people like them uh, it's the old classic way of doing it um, harps back a little bit to the Phiobians I suppose but um, yeah it's fine there's, there's nothing wrong with that um, it does look nice I just wish it was a little bit rounded on the end I, I don't know it's just me I suppose um, I for the life of me have no idea what this it looks like a Picatinny rail, but there's no way it's a Picatinny rail because it's under the barrel. If anyone can tell me what that is for, please let me know. I've just looked everywhere and I can't work it out. I have no idea what that is there for. Um, it just seems weird. Um, I'm thinking, is it cooling? or I've no idea what it is. So if you do know what this Picatinny bit here is for, please let me know. And then the bit that, um, if we flip the rifle around and mind the microphone, and then what we have here is the BSA standard way that they do their magazine locking system. So it's a little lock here. So when you put the magazine in here, you then lock it like so, um, and that locks the magazine in place. So uh, yeah, that, you'll find that a lot on the Ultras and the other rifles that BSA do. Um, and then you've got the magazine entry port here. So the magazine just slots in like so, you lock it in, and then you cock the rifle. And then the last thing really, there's not a lot else going on on here, is we have the safety catch here. Now the safety catch, it does make quite a click. Uh, it's not too bad at all, um, but uh, yeah, you, you obviously forward and backwards for safe and fire. Um, you can reset it, and it's not an auto safety, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I'd certainly give that over the top of the Virox that generally put the safety on all the time for you. Um, the actual quality BSA, you know, no matter what you say with them being um, with Gamo and that lot now, the actual BSA rifles themselves are beautifully finished. This is a stunning looking rifle. I will definitely give it that um, the, the woodmanship the actual metalwork um, all of the stamping of the BSA logos absolutely fantastic I really really do like that and then down at the bottom the nice thing about the R10 is obviously they've gone to town a little bit for the price up here so we've got a metal trigger guard and then we've got a proper two-stage match trigger and you can adjust the blade angle on that the, all of the different release points on it really really nice so I'm actually quite impressed with it um, nice so if you're looking for a classic type um, hunting rifle and I suppose this sort of goes up against the likes of the day state huntsman and, and those types of rifles then this is certainly one to be looking at um, uh, yeah I do like it uh, quite a lot there's a lot of them around the prices will vary you, you could probably pick one of these up for 500 pound you could go and spend a thousand pound on the 10th um, so yeah have a look around but um all of that said, more interestingly, what is it like to shoot? Is it any good? Everybody raves about them, everybody goes on about them. I, I'm expecting it to be quite good. So we'll do our usual thing. We'll take it outside, we'll have a shoot with it, and we'll come back and I'll give you my opinions and my thought on the BSA R10. All right, guys, so we're outside. It's a beautiful summer's day, it's early Sunday morning, hardly any wind. We've got the uh, R10 sat in the gun rest as well. And we're going to do our usual 25, uh, 25 meters, uh, 10 pellets, a selection of pellets. We're going to use some Crossmans, um, some Diablo Fields, some Sovereigns, some Superfield from JWS. I uh, hope I don't hit my camera with them. And then some GSB Exacts. Uh, we'll give them a go, we'll see how we go. It's hardly any wind. Camera's down range. You know how we do this. Cue the music and let's give it a go. So we'll start off 
uh, with the crossmans. So these are your standard 177 crossmans. Let's give these a go. Okay, so next we've got uh, the AA Diablo Fields 177. Okay, next up are the Sovereigns, again 177s, let's get these a go. Okay, I don't know if I dare do this, but I've got the RWS Super Fields. I've got a camera down range, so fingers crossed it's safe. Now for the JSB exacts. So that's us all done. Let's go and get the target, we'll go upstairs, we'll have a look and see what we've got and then we'll give you my summary and what I think of the uh, PSA R10. Okay, so we're back inside and um, yeah, well, not too bad actually. Um, I, I'm going to put it straight out there, it is not in the same league as the FX's or the Red Wolves that I've got up there. Um, and obviously I do not expect it to, but it is extremely capable rifle. Um, you've seen the shooting now, I'm actually quite impressed. The Crossman's cheap 177 Crossman pellets, very, very impressed. Um, you know guys, I'm not the best shot in the world um, and I use the bench to try to balance it all out but yeah, very impressive, never had that with Crossman's before um, nice cheap pellet uh, up here then we've got the Diablos, now these are the, the JSB type pellets um, again, very very good, um, I'm quite happy at 25 metres unsorted pellets, literally just picked them out of the tin, checked them, threw them in the magazine. Uh, in the middle we have the Sovereigns, um, again JSB type pellets, that little one up the top there, that's me, I mean just being me uh, shooting. Uh, the JSBs again, these are the classic, these are the JSBs, the ones 8.44 grain ones, um, again um, a, a few pool shots, that was me. And then we got the RWSs, uh, <laughs> at least I didn't hit the camera, yeah they're all over the place and that was the best group, trust me. Um, I actually spent some time with the RWSs and uh, I couldn't hit barn door with the bloody things so uh, yeah not too bad so accurate yes not right up there with the rest of the um, more expensive rifles but I do not expect that accurate enough absolutely accurate enough so it gets a good tick in the box for the accuracy price wise well you are paying sort of middle in prices to top end prices would I personally go out and buy one of these brand new at seven eight hundred pound Oh, that is a decision. You know, do you go for an Air Arms? Do you go for one of these? Do you go for one of the lower range um, uh, Day State ones? Um, I don't know. I, I, I really couldn't give you a choice. I think it will come down to personal opinion on that. It is certainly a very nice looking 
quality made rifle from BSA. Um, so um, yeah, you know, that's a difficult. Let's come back to that one afterwards. Um, I do like the authentic look on it. You know, some people, you take a look at the FX that's sat up there. <laughs> There's some people hate it, you know, or they love it. You know, it's, it looks too military to a lot of people. Then you've got the Red Wolf, my Dayglow Red Wolf over there. Obviously, you can get them in different colours and a uh, walnut. But, um, and, you know, you get the Wolverines and stuff with all of these um, lovely shiny laminates. You know, you can get this in laminate as well, but you know what? This is a stunkingly gorgeous looking rifle. Um, my only personal gripe is I don't like this type of bottle. I just wish it was rounded a little bit more, that's all. But that is a personal taste. That's all it is. But the finishing, the quality, absolutely. Um, a really, really stunkingly nice, good looking rifle. Um, I would put a slightly different modifier on the end of that. Um, but apart from that, um, I'm really, really impressed with it. And so the price range, um, well, well, let's come back to that. The price range, yeah, it's on the money there. Um, would I go out and spend a thousand pound on an R10 with the black plastic stock bit that lifts? No, I personally would not uh, do that. Would I actually go and get one of these second hand for four, five, six hundred pound? Oh, most definitely, yeah. If I was in the market for a rifle like this, then I would, most definitely. The trigger on it is absolutely fantastic. Um, a, it, obviously, because we're going up in the price range there, you're getting a proper full two-stage adjustable trigger on there. You can adjust the blade angle. It feels nice, it's crisp, it does fill you full of confidence. That allows you to get your finger just in the right place, Fill that second stage, bam, and away it goes. Really, really nice. And combine that then with the match grade barrel on here, um, and you do end up with a very good and accurate rifle. And by the way, the accuracy there, I did stretch it out a little bit out to about 40 meters, and I was very, very similar results as well. So it'll quite happily punch out nice tight groups out to 40 meters in the right hands. It'll do even better, not my hands on there. Um, I do also like the uh, fill gauge. Now, I didn't mention the fill gauge at the beginning, but I, I don't know what it is about these BSAs. They look like the new BMW matte black displays on your cars. I just love these. They look really nice, and I like it that it's here, not up at the top of the rifle where a, a lot of people are generally putting them nowadays. So I do like it being there. And in terms of the fill as well, it's a little bit weird. If you look just by the fill gauge, there's actually a little hole here. And it took me ages to work out how to fill this thing. But literally, the fill gauge is your standard type of pushing adapter, quick fill. Um, this has got a Foster's adapter on the end of it. And literally, it just pushes in like so. Uh, and unless somebody told you or you searched around, you wouldn't find that. So nice, simple, it does work um, nice and easy on there. So I'm actually quite, quite impressed with that. So uh, I do like that a lot on there. But uh, those are the plus points, certainly. Good, accurate rifle. Would you go and get one? Yeah, it's bolt action. A lot of people like bolt action. Um, personally, I think the bolt's a little bit too short. It feels like you're on a little kid's bike going like this. But um, yeah, that's just me. You can change the bolt out if you want, put a bigger hand on it or something not a problem at all and you'll find a lot of aftermarket ones have done that uh, the safety catch the fact that you can reset it nice nice and simple so let's move on to the bad points okay the bad points the shot count is not great definitely it is not a great one this one basically if you fill it up to about 200 210 bar i know it's supposed to go to 232 not many people do you fill it up to 210 to uh 10 200 210 bar you're basically you're, you're under 100 shots even with a humor regulator and this one's been failed and played with and tuned so um it's not a great shot count so if you're one of these guys that want to be able to magazine 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 are in um, and just shoot and shoot 400, then it's not for you, quite simple. Uh, but if you're somebody who wants a nice, good hunting, sporting rifle that you can take out, uh, stick a sling on it, go over, uh, wander down your fields to your favorite permissions, shoot your bunny rabbits and your magpies and everything like that, then that is plenty for you. And of course, it does keep the weight and the looks of it all down a little bit as well. So quite happy with that. Um, that does actually bring me though onto the biggest elephant in the room and where's Pallet? He's around there somewhere, he's hiding over there. But basically it's the magazine system. Um, and I'm always having a go at FX, well I'm going to have a go at BSA now. We've known for ages that BSA have always had their problems with their magazines. Um, they went through a massive big 
issue with them and they've redesigned and changed them all um, it, it, the concept is nice it works nice to a degree but I found with this magazine it is fairly pellet fussy sometimes it will not actually index so what will happen is I'll take a shot and I would fire and then I'd pull the bolt back and, fire, and nothing would come out and I'll take the magazine out and basically a pellet is stuck on it and literally I just had to flip it and then it flipped back onto the next one, put the magazine back in and away I went. I had that happen to me two or three times in, the, in a couple of hours with that and I think it's probably down to the actual pellet, the skirts on the pellets and stuff like that. It is particularly because there's fairly tight clearances in there. Um, and I've also had issues with the magazine system itself on here um, and again this might be related to pellets but when you actually put the magazine in and then you push down on this locking lever. If that locking lever doesn't go all the way down, that magazine is not in properly and you will not be able to close the bolt. So that's a very good indication something's going wrong straight away. And again, I had that happen to me a couple of times. I think it was with the Sovereign pellets, which are slightly different shapes to the standard JSBs. But I had that happen to me a couple of times on that. Make sure that that's all the way down. And the biggest problem I've had that if you do get a jam, it is very difficult to get this magazine out because you've got the magazine lock in here um, you'll find that you won't be able you, you have to put quite a bit of pressure to get the magazine lock out and then the magazine itself will be jammed in the breech um, trust me I, I've had it happen a couple of times where I had to get some mole grips with a bit of um, safety cloth so I didn't mark it put some mole grips on and literally yank this thing out and the bolt wouldn't move nothing would move um, so watch out with the magazine systems um, I've actually got three magazines here and only one of them actually works flawlessly all of the time and of course during my testing I was filling up all the magazines so it is I'm sorry to say it but every BSA I've had um, I've always always experienced something with the magazines 90% of the time they're fine if you get a good magazine keep hold of it mark it so you know which one it is so enough of that on the magazines um, some might not like the dated look of the rifle I personally think this looks like a cracking rifle this comes down to personal choice so don't take this as yes or no this is my personal choice I just don't like the steel bottle on here um, and I don't get this bit you know, unless somebody can tell me a very good reason for it um, I'll just like it to be a little bit more rounded on that it does look dated and uh, you know the R10 has been around for a long time it's getting new updates but effectively it's the same locking rifle on uh, like I said my my some people love this type of rifle you know I don't personally have a rifle like this I tend to go for the the modern look types of rifles but that's me but I just think it's a little bit dated on here um, another thing as well is there's no dust cover on here as well I'd love to see some sort of dust cover uh, on the fill port um, where it isn't there and it, it's far too easy for crap to get in there I think on that so um, I think I'm just checking my notes here and yeah um, some of the very earlier ones the some of the early mark ones and the mark twos did have regulator issues with them so you might you know if you get in second hand check to see whether or not anyone's put a, an aftermarket regulator in just check it out certainly make sure that you have a play with one but um, overalls what do I think well, if you're looking for a classic looking Hunter Sporter rifle that is PCP, that has a semi decent shot can, that is a semi decent price, um, you know, if you can get one of these second hand for four to five hundred, six hundred pounds, yeah, certainly, certainly consider it. Um, it's your classic bolt action Hunter rifle. Yeah, it is an excellent, excellent rifle. The finish quality, BSA, they've certainly kept it up here with this. The walnut, I think, is absolutely stunning. You're going to be spoilt for choices out there. There's loads of them. Would I go and get an R10? No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay a thousand pound for that with the cheap plastic stock bit on it, with a slightly bigger bottle and some special emblems saying tenth anniversary on it. At the end of the day, it's one of these with a slightly bigger bottle on it. So, um, yeah, that's what I think of the R10 um, cracking rifle. It will suit a lot of people. It is really down to personal choice. Um, it is a flooded area this part of the market. So um, get hold of one. I would certainly recommend that you shoot one, have a play with it, see what you think, see how it fits and feels for you, because it is absolutely really nice to shoot. Um, 
and um, keep watching. Let me know what you think. If you've got an R10, I know there's a lot of R10 fanboys out there, and I know a lot of you um, RM8 guys are going to go, go and get an RM8. <laughs> so let me know. If you've got an R10, let me tell me what you think about it. It is an excellent rifle. It does have a few little flaws and a few things to think about when you're considering one of these um, amongst other rifles that are out there in the same area and the same sort of price and look and feel on there. But I'd love to know your comments. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button check out below don't forget to check out our 3d printed pages as well lots of that stuff's flying off the shelves at the moment which is great and all helps the channel and i will catch you on the next video